they want to hold him as long as he wants to work. And um, single men, they got laid off just almost to the end when there was just a few jobs to do. And they laid off quite a, quite a few. That's when I got laid off. And, uh, and I didn't start till almost to the end. And I only work at the, at the powerhouse. Sometimes, sometimes the, the crew where I work, they send them up. That's right. Face that way. They send, send them up to, to the dam to, to work. That was the, that was the cleanup crew and the concrete crew. That's why I was working labor. And uh, they s sometimes they send the whole crew out someplace and uh, to do a day's work there, then maybe a couple of days, then they come back. And I'd be there all by myself to keep, keep the place clean. I never to go to work any other place. I just stayed there one one place all all the way through and uh, a lot of these Indians they put some of them to be uh, straw bosses to have their own crew to go out and work and different kind of work they take their crew and uh, and uh, a lot of Indians become uh, a straw bosses, and because it was run by the, by Indians, and we even had uh, Indian to be to handle everything. I don't know what what I'd call that. You know, to handle everything, and uh, his name was. Uh, Archie, Archie McDonald, and uh, because it was run by Indians and uh, inspectors, that white people inspectors, and and they didn't do right kind of job. That's why, that's why it is. Quite a few Indians got killed there. After I work over at the hunger horse, I noticed everything was running different than what they did at the Kerr Dam. The inspectors and all that, the contractors would look after their people, the crews, the carpenter, they have an inspector who go through. If they don't do things right, they make them do it over. And uh, concrete crews, same thing. And all different things, they have inspectors to go through. And, uh, and uh, that's what, they still have a lot of accidents there. But it's really accidents, what something they'll overlook. But at the Kurt Dam, everything was dangerous. Everything they do was dangerous. They know that one big slab of rock there was going to slide down any time, but they, they were still sending cleanup crew to go, go in there and work. And these poor Indians. I know one, we lost one old man here not too long ago. He was working there at that place where the bunch of them got killed. Every time he gets home, he tells his wife, something's going to happen up there. And he just happened to be off shift when it, when it happened. They know it was just going to have a big slide there, but they still said, boys to go and learn work. And oh, 
everything was just didn't run right because white people didn't care about it. It was run by Indians, and they lot of, that's why a lot of them got killed there. I was lucky that I was working at the powerhouse at the time because because the inspectors and all that were were always there to take care of the powerhouse, how it's supposed to be and everything. And that was in the safe safe place all the time. How many Indians were working there one time? I don't really know. It's on the record. Somebody knows There's it, but, quite a few but I don't. Could you say that? That's when now uh, my brother-in-law got killed there, Joe Matthias. Yeah. That's one of them that got killed. And that's an, another one. They know that they were going to have that dirt slide. They still send it in there to, oh. to work. Besides the way in which they didn't care about safety, were there other ways in which Indians re were treated race in a racist way by white people at Kerr Dam? I mean, did people, did white people call Indians names or, or cut them down in certain ways, or was there any of that going on? Say it over again. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering if, um, if there were ways in which, in which whites, if there were other ways in which whites mistreated Indians at Kerr Dam. Just in like, in for instance, the daily relations you had with the bosses or things like that. How how did they treat the Indian workers? They have their safety men and the contractors. There were accidents, all right. It wasn't. It wasn't really that they want. Uh, that they didn't care for them. It's. It's just the way. It's just the way they run. They run it. Like. Uh, like when they had that big rock slide. And. Uh, if the straw boss would know that it would, they were going to have that accident, and if they'd go to the main boss and tell them about it and tell the safety men, maybe they could have prevented some way, so so they could have blasted and let it let the rocks, you know, blast the rocks or do something with it without keep sending them in, in there, 
maybe it's the straw bosses that didn't uh, really care. Yeah. And they were more careful at Hungry Horse. Yeah. They just send the men in there, go back out someplace and work around uh, other... Then you work? And just let the, let the men in there. Mm -hmm. well, that was mostly whites working at Hungry Horse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from different... from different states. Just a very few uh, local people that were working there. They're all whites. That's, what that's he means that uh, if the Indians didn't know, they knew that. Yeah, he means that uh, the crew and the uh, bosses and the guys, if they weren't careless, if they were careful, the Indians, some of them knew that that slide was going to happen. And what he means, if they were so much interested in knew what would happen, seemed like they should know. They all go to school for different things and they know. They could blast all that off that there and then and then when it was all cleaned they could continue. But they knew that every day, especially in the month of April, when everything is softened from the winter you know, the winter, the frozen part was held back, and when it started to thaw out and loosen, loosen, the Indians did talk about it. They knew that when it thaws out, when it gets hotter, that thing was going to go over, which it did. And this is what he mentioned, this old man that had passed away here a while back, several years, was Inez Kinmel. He was an old-timer, and he was a full-blood Indian and real Indian. He had no schooling, nothing. But although they had him working there, too, and he was really smart in another way. And he was the one, he was my uncle, he knew that that was going to happen at all times. Joanne Tate was working there also. And they would talk about it and say, one of these days, it's going to be just too bad. And then it did happen, you see, that's what he meant. That in the month of April, when everything was done out, loosened, they would just have the crew stay out of there and blast the whole thing, part of it that was danger to go over. And uh, then, then work them again after, and it would be very safe. But they didn't work it that way, so there was a boy, I forget his first name, but he was a couture. He used to visit with us, you know, an awful lot and all. He'd come to our little house that they, we all, they build their own little, you know, shacks, houses there. And he knew himself that that was going to happen. And he told my husband that, uh, I'm going to go up till next payment, payday, and I'm going to lay off for a while till after this springtime and when I know everything is safe, then I'm coming back to work. He got caught right there. It was just a few days after he mentioned the payday, he was quitting, and then it happened right in that time. He was one of them that got killed. I forget his, his first name, but he was a couture boy. And my husband told him, you're right, he's, that's dangerous, it's going to slide. It did. What was the response among the Indians after the accident? 
You mean the money business? No, I think, I think uh, this guy that I mentioned, he's uh, running, running the whole whole thing. They call him Archie McDonald. I think he's the main guy that the straw bosses should should go to him and mention that that he do something something about it. But nobody did. They just keep right on working. Seems like nobody wants to say anything about it. Well, I wasn't there at the time. I went there afterwards, and I. I didn't know how how it started to happen and that what it happened and all that. I wasn't there. I got there afterwards. Then when it did happen, and uh, all them once, I forget how many of them that went under the rocks and all, and and where my brother-in-law got killed was a cave in was a different place. It was just a dirt cave in that buried him under. And there was three of the Indians that were killed there. That was Joe Matthias was my brother-in-law, and uh, Baptiste Sapiel was a flathead guy too, also a full blood Indian, and Ines uh, Ninami. There was three, those Indian guys that were b uh, buried underground right there. And uh, so their settlement was $10,000. That's all. My sister-in-law received $10,000 for losing her husband in that cave in. And I believe that's all the insurance that each one of them was carrying on them dangerous jobs. And right today, I do know that your insurance is sky high, you know, but that's all. And that $10,000, she already had, she had a child. This is Catherine Hamel right today. That was her father that got killed in that cave in. And she was just two years old at the time. And the mother was on her way having another child, and that was Camille Matthias. Unborn child, and he lost his dad. Then when she received this $10,000, it's nothing. So she didn't go very far with that money, and she was broke with her children's. But minus a husband, minus a dad. So that's how they worked it. And I believe every one of them had received the same amount of money, you know, for, for that accident they had there. That Couture boy and Anderson, and there was quite a few that was, seemed like there was more Indians, there was whites there that was on that big slide. The river and this cliff caved in, caved in. But this, across this way was where the, the dirt just caved in and buried the, the three men. And there was nine pipes and forget several others that were safe. They just barely got there in time to grab their hands and, and pull them all out. There wasn't too many in that crew. They took all these full blood Indians, I'd say, plus my brother-in-law. He didn't have any much schooling and he and all these other Indians were all in the same category. So they placed them there, and they could have all got killed if there wasn't too many lively people that went there and grabbed their hands to pull them out of that. All except the three were buried way down, and that was it. 
when they dug them out, we were all close there watching my sister-in-law and I and several others. And she knew what happened then, but different guys would come running to us and just don't feel bad because when we pull them out, we can survive them. But we know better than that. So one at a time, they got them out and already sheets over them. They back them to the ambulance. They were all dead. And the rest were sh all shooken. Nine I didn't know where he was when they first got him out there. He was like he was drunk or something. He was in shock. And the rest of them were in shock. But they pulled out of it, though, and they lived to go another few years, and when they really got old, and, but the, just the three of them, they were buried and they were dead. Is there anything you would like to add to that? All the time I was there, when it was almost completed, there was seemed like there wasn't <coughs> any danger anymore. But right from the start, that's when it was really dangerous. One thing I'm curious about—I've mentioned this before—is. Um, 